Why, hello, this is the Not Too Social Hour, and I'm Bat Robbins, and I'll be talking about <clears throat> something truly disgusting, special relationships. Before I get into the two people, one I'm not angry with, the other I've been very angry about, and um, like the first guy, we parted friends, I, I felt a little, I felt bad about it, but that's the only bad about it, I, know, I have no animosity toward one guy. And I have quite a bit of lingering animosity towards another. In both cases, there was the aspect of special relationships and one's hopes of achieving such, of achieving a greater consciousness, greater happiness. These were platonic friendships. Uh, I am completely gender tolerant. There's no bias, no hate. I'm affirmative action compliant. I'm a heterosexual male in these relationships. These friendships were exclusively heterosexual. I'm not saying they're normal, I'm saying they're heterosexual. There's no sex involved between me. And any man I'm talking about, I'm talking about platonic friendships. Actually, in both cases, the span, the dimension, the outcome of friendship in all cases was, it came, all, in all cases, in both, both situations, it came to a crisis. I'll, I'll get into that crapola. Uh, there was some other bullshit. Now, let me start with the, the worst of the two. Um, first of all, the guy expressed envy. Um, he was envious that I uh, actually had had some good relationships in my life. Not that they really lasted or anything, but no. The guy felt entitled to a special type of relationship as believed was common of the hippie era. It was long past the hippie era. This asshole was still trying to relive the, relive the hippie era. Still is, probably. He's, you know, I think he's going to go out, you know, with his beads and bullshit. But, uh, no, he got pissed at me over... So, actually, what he got, what he got pissed at me, or he, he made... First, he started with him giving me shit about a perceived unfair advantage. That was the thrust of, the, of his beef towards me. Mine towards him was he could be a spineless, backstabbing sleazeball. He was also a sexual deviant. He would always tell me about his sexual obsession. For the longest time, I was nice about it. I used to be a nice guy, but he was a bore. I used to be tolerant of sexual deviants as long as they keep their little fucking greasy mitts off me. I mean, they can go with their girlfriend and do what they want together. I never really liked hearing particularly sick deviants talk about wanting to hurt people, which is a fact of this creep. Actually, it's on me for tolerating this asshole as a friend. He became malicious. Uh, let's see, what else was a, this special? Oh, the special relationships. He was mad at me because I told an anecdote about a special relationship. He was envious all around. I spent one year in Providence, Rhode Island. I, I, I was living in Meadville, Pennsylvania first and went to Rhode Island. I was, I was seeking a job and, you know, a career. Uh, social life, yeah, seeking a better career, a better social life. Uh, I met some interesting people. I did have an interesting relationship with the manager of a rooming house. I had, I think I was, tell, I was talking to Fred about, you know, the matter of learning and growing from talking to an older per and more experienced person in a new location. That's true. It really happens, and it can be very meaningful. It can be a, people have beautiful relationships, and I don't mean to be a gloom. It's not too social hour. Some people have good social acumen. Some people, even people with poor social acumen, enter into beautiful relationships, become better people as a consequence. They enjoy the world more. They make better decisions. Their relationships in the future improve. Unfortunately, there are other individuals who are a complete organic fuck job. This guy was one of them. Uh, Special relationships. Let me start with a horror story. Uh, this was in Time magazine in the 1970s. I was six. I'm 61 now. I was a. I think I was in high school. Marcus Welby, M.D. It was a television show. It was a new type. There had been other television shows uh, about med medical soap operas like Ben Casey and Doctor Kildare. Ultimately. The greatest, the most, the most radical leap in the medical soap opera on television, Marcus Welby. This was a new, new humanistic angle. This was, this was the family-oriented clinic, the liberal doctor. Would you believe this? There were doctors many years ago who were actually conservative. Anyway, Marcus Welby eventually appeared as a sort of, well, quasi-liberal. 
He might have been a Republican. Who? The, Robert Young, I think it was. There was Consuelo. I mean, I can't picture her. You know, never mind. I was going to say something dirty. And this time I'm really not. I was going to say something dirty about Helena Verdugo, who played Consuelo. And I just, I'm, I'm slightly mature, more mature than I used to be, and I'm not going to say it. But here's what happened with the article, that news article. It, coast to coast, people were watching Marcus Welby and complaining to their doctors and their friends and everyone else, even to consumer advocates. They were entitled to a working relationship, comparable to the working relationship fake TV doctor Marcus Welby had with fake, fictitious patients. Um, since then, it came out that therapy is not about forming a special relationship, especially psychotherapy. You don't form a, people don't form special relationships with a therapist. They attempt to correct what is wrong with the aid of a therapist. Uh, you know, tell other television shows misguided the public similarly into thinking they were entitled to, even teachers, true. People were led to believe they're entitled to weird relationships with teachers. Look, countless stories go into that garbage. Joyce Carol Oates was great at that. But anyway, no, I, I, there were other authors that uh, kind of... No, she was a great author. I liked her. But, uh, you know, what? getting back to Marcus Welby and two ex-friends of mine, uh, people became... Uh, they, people developed a sense of entitlement for a relationship that may not exist, that they may be incapable of initiating. The two assholes. No, one guy was an asshole. One guy was just a good person with problems. I guess that's a reason to contrast two ex-friends of mine. Uh, the one guy who turned it was a malicious, backstabbing, spineless piece of shit. The other guy's in another state, different, happened in a different place. In fact, that happened in Providence, Rhode Island. The problem with him, we were friends when I left town, we correspond by mail. He eventually become, became angry and disappointed, I guess, because he, he, he wanted more growth in his life and his friendship with mine. He had specified in one letter that he, he wasn't feeling any sense of growth. He wasn't feeling that the relationship between himself and I was really doing anything for him. Uh, he was a good guy. He wasn't a bad guy. He might have been depressed. I think he had, I think he just had emotional difficulties, I, I think. And Actually, years afterwards, you know, I was in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, 83 through 84. Years after the fact, they kind of evaluated what had gone on. The douchebag, the other douchebag, um, the guy was angry. Uh, what an irony. He was, like, angry because I had had a po positive relations elsewhere where he had been, just been a jerk in every community. He'd, he'd gone through. He was envious of other people's status. He was desperate. This guy was a desperate socialist. Sickest. He's one of the sickest opportunist social climbers. I've known a few of these. I've been ranting about several of them. There's, there's just different types of them. This guy'd shit on you in the New York Minute if he had something to gain. This prick also differentiates, um, I don't want to say organizations. Like if, you, if you, He differentiates status with organizations. If you have no status with an organization, you know, he'll shit on you in a New York Minute. Conversely, a higher up within one of his favorite organizations. He'll eat their asshole out, even if they just, even if they just put a fresh coat of uh, shit fuckosity on their ass to remove their hair. Fred would lick their asshole out. Oh, shit fuckosity. This show is supposedly and not really supported by shit fuckosity. The, the hair remover removes tip hair, cock hair, snatch hair, removes the shit that grows out of your ears, and it does not sting your asshole. Uh, that I, I, I couldn't help doing that. I, I love that product so much, I couldn't help, you know, putting in an extra plug for shit fuckosity. It's a really good depilatory. But I was talking about special relationships. And the fact that people may feel entitled to one, and people may feel envious of other people for seemingly to achieve them. Stalkers seek out special special relationships. I think the worst of the two examples, I think that guy actually has stalked people with whom he wanted a special relationship. Anyhow, uh, he got he, this guy blew up at me. He was angry about, uh, let's see. He was angry with me about a that I that I had, had a perceived unfair advantage. Uh, he was angry or envious about perceived special relationships. 
Uh, the other individual was angry that he did not achieve the growth in his life. Uh, he didn't. I, I think the throat, his problem was he, he, he sought some sort of personal growth in his life and was beginning to get angry with people who were not uh, contributing to it. I feel a little more empathy, of course, towards you know that than the other. The other one I really... The other guy I actually hate. Uh, but whatever. No, one guy, one of them was actually a sensitive guy and it was, a, it was sad that the guy had you know, problems in his life. Uh, what, where was I going? Oh, crack tea. It's time for another commercial break. Uh, special relationships, yeah. Oh, speaking of special relationships, you can form a very special relationship with our, um, 24-7 counselors at Crack Teeth, they'll talk to you. Uh, like, if, if, if suppose you ate one package of Crack Teeth, it's the synthetic yogurt. It's a synthetic yogurt with natural ingredients that make you shit. And if you're really shitting better, that you'll want to tell somebody. You'll want to call up at the number uh, on the package and uh, tell one of our representatives that you're really shitting better than you were. That's great. If you're still constipated, we have counselors that will give you advice. Crack tea was made special for people who are bleeding out the ass. You know, you still have to shit. And this is this will help. It, it, it won't hurt so bad. You know, you'll still be bleeding out the ass, but, but it won't hurt as much. You know, your shit will come out easier. So, you know, get yourself a package of uh, crack tea. And also, be, remember to remove hair with uh, shit fuckosity. Uh, we were talking about special relationships. Um, off topics, Anton LaVey talked about emotional parasites. He called them uh, an emotional parasite, psychic vampires. An emotional parasite and a, is the exact same thing. Anton LaVey was a pretender. He was a bogus Satanist. He put on a tent show performance regularly, raised money for him. I like that sort of... I enjoy crazy bullshit like that. And I'm, I'm otherwise an atheist. But Anton LaVey, has, I read his book, one of his books. It talked about psychic vampires. He, he actually outlined several types of them. He mentioned the, the person with emotional problems who makes everyone cooperate because they might crack up. You have to be sensitive towards them. You have to be helpful towards them. Also, you're a bad person because you're not helping. The crippled cocksucker I was just complaining about. You had an unfair advantage. You should feel bad about yourself. You've had an unfair advantage. He's entitled to a special relationship, and people are being assholes and withholding this special relationship he's entitled to from. This, this crosses over into business and professional crap, especially with shrinks and doctors, as people believe they're entitled to a relationship comparable to what they saw on television. Frightening. People are assholes. Television sucks. It's been sucking for as long as I can... As long as I've been around. Fuck's sake. Television has been a pernicious element. Movies are just as bad. People are assholes. <laughs> oh, God. I was talking about the Electoral College in another rant off topic again, but... Uh, my point was that if the public is that out to lunch, it might be a good idea not to abolish, to leave the Electoral College exactly as it is, because the voting public is all seeking a special relationship when they fucking vote, and they don't get one. Anyhow, uh, this is a not-too-social hour. I'm Bat Robbins, remember? remove If you got a hair problem anywhere on your body, tits, twat, cock, balls, anywhere you're taint, legs, arms, head. Uh, shit fuckosity will remove ugly hair from you. Uh, and use crack teeth. That's the uh, that's a synthetic yogurt uh, with natural ingredients that make you shit. It'll help you shit if you're bleeding out the ass. And we have 24-hour counselors who can talk to you about what you need to do to shit better. Thanks. I'm Bat Robbins, and this is the Not Too Social Hour.